Hey everyone, I'm Valdemar, Docker Captain, AWS Community Builder, HashiCorp Ambassador, Sneak Ambassador, Cypress Ambassador, and a DevOps consultant with over 20 years in IT. I've worked at Amazon, IBM, and both big and small companies. Today, I help teams master DevOps, containers, and cloud technologies. On this channel, we break down DevOps, Docker, and all things automation, so you can level up your skills and build powerful, scalable systems. Now let me guess, you've played around with GPT, Cloud, maybe even built a little chatbot. But the moment you ask it something like, hey, can you post in Slack that the task is done? It just says, I would, but I'm just a language model. Sounds familiar? Today we're talking about how that's changing fast. We'll look at how language models went from just talking to actually acting, thanks to agents, MCP and Docker. Uh, yep, they finally got hands. No real ones, of course. I'm talking about agents, small programs that let AI interact with real-world tools, like sending a Slack message, opening a Stripe payment, opening a pull request on GitHub. No magic here, just tech. And at the center of it all is MCP, the Model Context Protocol. It gives models a secure, consistent way to connect with APIs, databases and cloud services. Ok, let's start with the Max Payne. Uh, before we get to the good stuff, let's rewind. What made this whole thing so hard in the first place? AI has always been great at giving advice. It can write code, fix bugs, even generate song lyrics. But the moment you asked it something simple like can you send an email to a client? It would just look at you metaphorically and say I'd love to, but I just generate words. I don't do stuff, and hey, fair enough, the logic was there, the reasoning was solid, but action that was outside the job description. So developers came up with a clever workaround. Give the model tools in the form of tiny helpers called agents. So what actually is MCP and why does it matter so much in all of this? In the world of MCP things are structured, the model thinks, the agent acts, and MCP is the cable that connects the brain to the hands. Here is how it works step by step. The model says what it wants, like send this message to hell. The host passes that to the right agent, called an MCP server. The server does the thing, sends the message, makes the API call. The result goes back to the model and it wraps up its reply. Pretty slick, but early on it was a mess. Now here is the part no one misses, the old way of doing this. You had to manually spin up MCP servers, deal with different stacks, Python, Node, Chromium, all arguing with each other store API keys in plain JSON, a security team's nightmare, and if you needed multiple agents, now you're deep in YAML files, container logs and mild panic. You just wanted to check a Stripe payment and instead you somehow joined a Kubernetes support group. And this is where Docker comes in and changes everything. Again? Seriously? Docker made MCP agents easy to launch, safe to isolate and painless to manage. Think of it like this, your AI gets hands and Docker gives those hands gloves, clean, contained, controlled. So what does that mean for you? Each agent runs in its own container, it only sees what you allow, no mess on your system, no version conflicts. But wait, it gets even better, Docker Desktop now offers the MCP toolkit with over 100 ready to use agents available through Docker Hub. Want to use an agent? It's a free step move. Pick one, Docker spins up a container and the agent starts listening for model comments. That's it! Now here is another issue we used to have. Multiple apps trying to spin up the same agent over and over. That meant duplicate containers, double the tokens, wasted network traffic and way more complexity than necessary. Now one agent, one container, multiple clients can use it. No duplication. No drama. All this power sounds great, but is it safe? Yep, and here is why. Agents run inside isolated Docker containers. That means they can only see what you clearly share. They don't mess with your core system. They can't reach places they're not supposed to. 
Docker enforces these boundaries by default, and you can override them with dash dash privileged or by mounting the Docker socket, but unless you're into high risk adventures, just don't. Stick with the defaults and use verified agents. So, who actually benefits from all this? If you are using GPT, Cloud, or Copilot and want them to do stuff, not just talk about it, working in DevOps and tired of writing the same glue code over and over, a product manager who wants AI plugged into GitHub, Jira, Stripe, or Slack in minutes, not hours, then this is for you. You get an agent running in just a few clicks, built-in safety and isolation. And if you need to scale, just add more agents. That's it. AI doesn't just think anymore, it acts. And with MCP plus Docker, it acts fast, securely and at scale. So if you are ready to give your model real world power, this is the way to do it. No hacky scripts, just agents that work from prompt to production, clean, safe, smart, Welcome to the agent-powered era, my friends. If you learned something new today, smash that like button, it really helps the channel. If DevOps, containers and cloud are your thing, hit subscribe and ring that bloody bell so you don't miss what's coming. What part of this agent setup got you thinking? Was it the Docker isolation? The MCP flow? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what clicked you. Want to geek out with other DevOps folks, AI builders and infra nerds? Join our Discord, links below. That's it for today. Keep building, keep shipping, and may your containers always stay clean, isolated, and conflict-free. See you in the next one.